for having to do defensively uh, to adjust in this game. It's kind of a different style, up tempo, offense, spread out a lot, a lot of passes. So um, probably not the kind of day we needed to have today. But the offense practiced well, a lot better than we did um, defensively. So from that, we'll open it up. Any kind of things you have to do differently as a defense when you're playing a left-handed quarterback? Not really. <clears throat> I mean, his blind side's an opposite side, so there's some pressures you might run to the back side of his arm rather than the front side of his vision, which would be different than a right-hander, but nothing that we're really doing. Obviously, no, you, you guys want players to get week to week, but I wanted to see if anything similar about Middle Tennessee and maybe what you'll face next week against Missouri. No, not at all. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't. I don't honestly know because I don't know a whole lot about what Missouri's doing. Uh, I know they've done the past, but they've got a new coordinator, so right. hadn't had the opportunity to watch much of uh, Missouri's tape. So we're concerned with Milton C. And they've got a good football team, good system. I uh, respect for Coach Stock and uh, Tony Franklin. They do a good job. So it's, it's a very different offense uh, than we faced. Coach, you talked about how leaders emerge as you go out throughout the season. Do you see uh, Natrez Patrick as a guy that could emerge into one of those vocal leaders in the defense? Yeah, Natrez is a vocal leader. I mean, he's been a vocal leader for two years now. I mean, he's a kid that loves the game, uh, passionate about it, similar to Led in that he practices really hard and uh, not afraid to speak up. He doesn't worry what other people think about him and things like that. So he's, he's done a good job uh, commanding respect from his teammates as far as the way he practices. <clears throat> Juwan kind of has that going for him, too. Yeah. Is he kind of taking a bigger kind of leader of the front seven or even the defense kind of line? Yeah, I would say definitely the linebacker unit. He's probably the hardest practicing kid on our total defense. So he, he gets uh, immediate respect from the way he practices, and uh, he is a vocal leader. He's taking, he's taking much more of a, a leadership role. It's, it's important to Juwan to do that. Juwan and, and Keon are two guys that kind of come to mind. I'm sure there are others that sit around and kind of bided their time and, and all of a sudden playing key roles for the defense. What how does that make you feel as a coach when, when you kind of see that for guys waiting around and waiting around and then, bam, it, their, their opportunity comes up? Our work pays off. You know, I mean, I think this is a, the defense that the system allows you once you know it and you have confidence in the system and you understand it. You can use the tools in the defensive system to help you be able to play. It's not a system that says just because you're the best athlete, you go out there and play. you got to understand what offenses are trying to do to you and how you can use the call we give you to help yourself. They both understand that, and uh, they've been here, like you said, they've been in the system for four years. I mean, they understand how to use the system, and it helps them. And they're both really hard workers, good special teams players, too. And what was it about Tay Crowder that you saw with him as a running back you thought would translate to being a linebacker in this league? Well, he's athletic. He's big, fast, athletic. I mean, those are all qualities of a good linebacker, and we were pretty deep at back at the time. I think he could have been a good running back. I don't know if he'd have been like the guys we had, but he had an opportunity to come over and uh, when you play space teams all the time, you want space players. And that's where Tay's probably at his best is change direction. He's a former receiver in high school. And, uh, he fits the mold of being able to run with uh, backs and tight ends. So do you remember uh, evaluating DeAndre Baker as a recruit? And uh, when you got here, he hadn't played that much. What did you think you had with him? Well, I, we, we evaluated him in Alabama. We thought he was a really good player. Um, we didn't pursue him as hard as we did some other guys. We probably were wrong on that. Um, he, he had track speed. I mean, he was a 400 meter. He was a guy he could fly. So I mean, usually the first thing you look at that corner is size, speed, and he checked off both the boxes there. Um, but he's a kid who's developed and gotten better. I mean, from the time we got here, we thought he was a good player. We thought some guys were in front of him. And I was telling you the other day, I remember, I think it was yesterday, he had a good camp, a good training camp that first year, and really was competing for the starting job with uh, Briscoe and some other guys. And it was probably neck and neck. We went with the other guys, and then you know, what happened happened in the old Miss game. He got to go out there, and ever since then, he's been getting better and competing and he kind of proved us wrong that he should have been out there the whole time. Back to inside linebacker, how do you feel those those top four guys are, are doing so far? They're doing a good job. They uh, what, What's best is they all complement each other, so our ability to play all four of them helps keep them fresh. I thought that Nate Trez made a couple of plays Saturday that he might not have made had he not just come from the sideline. So they're able to go four or five plays, come back in, so you see max effort. I think sometimes at the linebacker position, you, you play guys too long, you get tired. So those four guys have rolled and done a good job. Uh, Channing, Tyndall, and, and Quay are coming on. As, as they learn it, they're going to be able to help us because 
they're probably both a little more explosive and quick twitch and faster. They're just still learning and, and, and learning the defense, and, and that's important for them. The other four know what to do really well, and they continue to do well, and they put us in the right call. And I, I appreciate how they practice. They practice really hard. Um, coach, kind of to ask sort of a bigger picture question on the work that you've done as a, a coach here through in your third year now. I mean, I, uh, I was watching other practice today, and you just there's that same type of fire even in mentality regardless of the opponent that y'all face and, and and you know you've been able to preach the whole thing about the standard every week and um, so I was just wondering like where does that uh, fire and meditationality come from and is the I guess it's the passion you have for the job you have at Georgia does that kind of lead that on for you? I think it's just wanting to be the best I mean, for me, it's always been a passion to coach, and if you're going to do something, I'm all in, whatever I do. It doesn't matter if it's golf, checkers, or football. I mean, I, I just think it's important that if you're going to spend the time that we spend, the time I spend away from my family, my kids, and not getting to be around them, and I know our coaching staff would feel the same way, that you want to give all you got. And I want these players to see day in and day out that if they really try hard and they really demand a lot of themselves, they can be successful in life. And, I don't know that some of them uh, realize the hard work they actually do. What they do while they're at Georgia's players is much harder than what they'll do in the real world. I mean, when they got to get up, go to class, work all day, go to workouts, do football, and then they get a nine to five job. Sometimes they think that's a little bit easier, but I want them to be able to say that our coaching staff set an example of giving them everything they had every day. So that's what's important to me. Seeing John Theus out there working with you guys a little bit, what's his official role and how did that come about? I know he retired yeah. from the NFL, but how did it come about? Did he reach out to you, you to him? How did that work? Well, he, he finished up his career and uh, he's back graduating. So he's a student, undergraduate student assistant, very similar to what Butler was, okay. very similar to what Nick Williams has been, a lot of those guys are. And uh, when we found out he was coming back and retired, we reached out to him and I think at first he just kind of said, you know, I'm going to go to school and not do that. But then he came over and talked to Sam and visited with us. And he just he does what he can. He's a very limited role, but he uh, he's really good for those players because he's been there, done that, he's played at a high level. I think he's really good for our players to be around a guy that's been successful in this league who's also gone and played in the next league. So he's been a big asset for us. I appreciate him doing it because he doesn't have to. Coach, uh, how do you feel about your interior defensive line guys? Uh, Julian Rochester and Tyler Clark specifically uh, seem to be a lot of work in there. And they've done a good job. Uh, we've got to get better. We've got to get more explosive. Uh, you know, we've got to play better defensively as a whole unit. Those guys are playing really hard. You know, I thought Tyler made some really good plays uh, early on Saturday. And uh, it gets tough sometimes because of the way we rush the quarterback. It's not easy to go get sacks all the time. We don't just cut guys loose because of the way we play in the secondary. We're a little bit different style than most people. But those kids work hard, <coughs> practice hard, um, and we, we've, we've really got a committee there. We've got some big bodies, but we have a lot of guys who play. We play eight or nine guys up front to keep them fresh, keep them rushing hard. And Tyler and Julian are kind of the leaders of that group and been pleased with the way they work, led better as well. Get unsung guy, I think, in that group is, is like a guy like David Marshall. Yeah. I mean, he's – Played so many snaps for you guys, it doesn't even seem like to us sometimes like he has a defined role necessarily. It does seems like he does so much different stuff for you guys. What is it that you think that allows him to to kind of flash on the field like he seems to do all the time? Strength. He's powerful. He can play all the positions. He's smart. Never complains. Toughest guy in the room. Hurt all the time, but never hurt. Practices doesn't complain. He just oh, he's a worker, and he's really strong. So when he's at the point of attack, they don't move him. And I think that's allowed him to become a very, what you said, unsung hero. Because he doesn't play a lot of third down, but he gets us to third down. And uh, that's important. He knows his role. Before the season, y'all were working with several guys at the back of the back spot, um, Marcus, Kendall, and Kane. What pushed Kane ahead of some guys who maybe had some more experience in that? I just felt like he practiced better. And um, he, he's got a lot of potential. He's practiced better. He's practiced hard. He's smart, tough. It's important to him. And at the end of the day, it's just who's, who played better in the scrimmages and who, who played better in the practices, and he did. An update on Andrew. Yeah, he didn't practice today. Um, he's still not able to practice. Uh, he's better, but we don't know if he's going to be able to play the game or not. A certain time of the week where you need to see him for you. 
Yeah, I mean, I would want him at least practice by Thursday. He's played enough, but mm -hmm. if he didn't practice by Thursday, it's probably not looking good. Coach Chip, one, one of your closest friends in the business is Mike Bobo, uh, and uh, they got, he got a big win this past weekend. Seen him limp around out there. He's still hurting from being in the hospital. I, I know you guys are close. I'm wondering if you've been able to talk to him. Did you catch that win? And and uh, uh, just your, your feelings about uh, what you're seeing him go through this season and the little time he had. I texted him. I told him, you better never count a Bobo out. I've been in many a battles with, with him, against him, and with him, and uh, lifelong friends growing up right down the road from each other. And to see what he's endured and his family's endured, it's been amazing. Uh, to go through two losses like he had, and then to come back and beat an SEC opponent when at some point in the game they were 99% probable to lose by the ESPN stats. And he comes back and wins. And then to see him with his dad afterwards and get to see him hug his son, that's just really what it's all about. And you don't ever count him out, I can promise you that. He's a, a great football coach and a really good person. Kirby, you guys aren't really like using a fullback now. Do you look at not on Warner as tight end slash H-backs? And it seems like you guys still get the same physical nature that a fullback position brings to the field. Yeah, it's different. I mean, I, call it what you want. Some people call it fullback, H-back, whatever. It's just whether you're two back, one back, what do you want to call it? I mean, that's what they do. I mean, uh, you know, they don't line up as fullbacks. They line up as H-backs or tight ends. So it's really a matter of semantics to me because somebody's got to go block somebody. I like to have guys that can block people, play on special teams, catch balls, run run patterns, and those guys sometimes do that better than just for fullbacks. You're a little more predictable with a fullback, I think. But uh, those those guys are playing hard, and Luke's coming on. And uh, it's important for Luke to grow so we can get some depth, and John Fitzpatrick's getting better as well. I was going to ask you about Luke. Kind of what is he doing right now to get a little better? Well, he got, he got to play the other day. He had yeah. some really good blocks and uh, played physical. And uh, he's just got to play. I mean, it's hard to get better sometimes until you play. And he's been able to play. And we took some time Monday for the guys that didn't get enough reps Saturday and let them go out and play. Just go play. And uh, he's doing that. I think he's getting better. He's very powerful and can run. He's just not comfortable with everything we're doing this year. Have you all stopped like trying to get a fullback, a classic fullback, and kind of folding those responsibilities into the tight end going forward? I wouldn't say we stopped. If we had one, it'd be great. But we're not uh, investing scholarship in one right now because we're not a two-back team. So much of what we do, if you see Miko catching these passes and all these things, that would be trading a spot for a fullback. I don't think any band would vote for us to trade a slot receiver for a fullback right now. Um, so we're just looking to be explosive, uh, be dynamic, and we think that we can still be physical with tight ends and not necessarily have the fullbacks. If a fullback comes along, falls into our hands, or a linebacker can play fullback, then we'd be all for it. But that's just not who we are right now. Two more questions. Through a couple games, you know, William Poole has been playing that primary coverage star role. What's been your evaluation to him thus far as he seems to be around the ball a lot? He, uh, he practices really hard, man. It's really important to pull. He's a, a great kid, and he continues to learn and get better. But that's one of the spots, and many spots in the secondary, we have to play better. We have to play at a higher level to be successful, to beat the teams we've got to beat. And uh, he's a grinder. I mean, he comes in every day to work. And I know he gets tired of me coaching him because I'm on him every day. Kind of a similar question with Tyson Campbell. What did you see from him on Saturday? And what are you trying to see more of from him in the game against Memphis? Confidence. Just playing with more confidence and uh, getting his hands on people. He's, I mean, he didn't play bad the other day. He, he played, he's a good receiver, good quarterback, and gave up a big play at the end. And I think that he's uh, a kid that's going to get better. And the only way he's going to get better is play. And we've said that over and over, that we got to go through some growing pains with these guys because we lost a lot of productive players in the secondary. And, Tyson continues to work hard. Thanks. Okay.